Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using four of the magnetic tins, the small ones, one of the stars from this 4th of July banner, two arrows, and a pizza pan. So I just took a little bit of spackle and filled one of the holes at the top part of the arrow because the bottom one is not going to show. Every now and then, the Dollar Tree carries the arrows that have the little tails already attached to the end of the arrow, and then you can just slice it in half and not have to worry about cutting a star, and it's a cuter tail. So I'm just using a sharp utility knife to cut across that star, and I'm going kind of diagonally so I can get two tails out of the one star, and then set the other two aside, because you know we're gonna use those for Christmas. So now I'm just going to take my Waverly chalk paint in ink and paint my arrows, including all of the sides. And then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint my pizza pan. So now I'm going to take my magnetic tins and I'm going to paint those white as well and I'm just using my chalk paint and you'll have to give this a couple of coats but I'm only painting the lids and leaving that little plastic opening open so that you can see through it. So then I found some different buffalo check patterned items. I have some ribbon and some fabric and then I have a couple of sheets of paper. Originally I was going to use the black and white bandana from Dollar Tree but I didn't really like the way it looked so I changed that out so that they're all the black and white buffalo check or gingham. So now for the bottoms, I'm just going to take some white grow grain ribbon from the Dollar Tree and hot glue that to the bottom portion of my tin so that the lid can still pop on and off very easily. So now I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in black and then just using a fan brush, I'm going to lightly with a dry brush distress that around the edges and on the corners well there's no corners in circles but you know what i mean <laughs> and then just give that a little bit of highlighting and detail if you get a little heavy-handed and accidentally put too much on like i did right here you just go back with your white chalk paint and go over it and you won't even be able to tell So now I'm going to take my Silhouette Cameo 3 and cut out the words Prayers Ascending and I'm using the font called The Skinny which you can get at defont.com for free for personal use and then I'm going to cut those words out, take off the top part of my vinyl and then I'll weed out the insides and I usually make small cuts with my utility knife so that it's a little easier to handle when I'm pulling all that vinyl off. So now I'm gonna take my Frisco craft transfer tape and place that on top of my words. And then I'll put prayers at the top and then ascending towards the bottom. And I'm using my little tin can magnets to kind of separate and see how far I need to make that spacing. I really like using Frisco Crafts adhesive vinyl and transfer tape and so I'll have them listed in the description box below as well as a coupon so you can get 5% off of your next purchase. Now if you make a mistake and as you saw here I pulled off a little bit of the paint when I pulled up my transfer tape, you can just go back with your chalk paint and touch that up. So now I'm going to take the tops of my arrows and I'm going to point them in different directions on the back using E6000 and some hot glue. And the E6000 will make it stay permanently in place while the hot glue will just be your temporary hold so that you can move it around right away. And then I'm going to place my tails at the bottom so it looks like the arrow is going straight through the back side of my sign. And then to make the hanger on the back, I'm just going to take a little pipe cleaner and twist it at the bottom, making a little loop, and then put some hot glue and a little piece of ribbon, and it's all done. 
and here it is all finished and if you couldn't tell the little tins are for one member of each family and you will put your prayer inside of the little can and stick it up there and then you've got prayers ascending so i really love how this turned out and i hope you guys like it too For our next Dollar Tree project, we're going to be using two mugs, one in white and one in black. And if you can find the ones with the straight sides, that makes this project so much easier. So I'm just going to measure to see how large I need to make my words. And I'm using one white and one black. So obviously the white will show on the black mug and the black will show on the white mug. And so I'm using my Silhouette Cameo 3 again, and I'm going to be using the font called Pink Script. And all of these fonts will always be listed in the description box below, unless I, you know, forget, because that happens sometimes. So as most of my regular viewers remember, we have a brand new rainbow baby grandson, Connor, who is four months old, and he'll soon be getting baptized in just a couple of weeks. So my daughter wanted to find a sweet way to ask her friend Emily and her husband Richard if they would be the godparents. And so we're making this little perky prize for them when she asks them. So she made them a dinner to go, had some beautiful fresh flowers in a vase, and then this perky prize. It was really a special moment and everyone was in tears and they were super surprised. And I had thought I had recorded everything so that I could share it with you guys, but apparently I forgot to press record and so I'll just have to always remember it in my heart. <laughs> So because this is a permanent adhesive vinyl, it is supposed to go through the dishwasher, but I have never tried it and I should do that experiment. I meant to do it a long time ago so I could report to you guys. So I'll have to do that soon and get back to you. I just never take the chance anyway and always hand wash it so that I don't have to worry about it. And here they are all finished and I think these are so cutie patootie. The font I love so much, again it's called Pink Script and that's from thehungryjpeg.com and I'll have that listed down below as well. And the Godfather cup is sitting on top of my Bible that I got from my first Holy Communion when I was eight years old from my grandma Yvonne. And it's engraved with my name on the front. So that's super special. And then the little rosary right next to it was my grandma Esther's. And I received that after she passed away in 2000. So I love how these turned out and so did Emily and Richard. And here's how we presented it. We put it in a Dollar Tree container and said, will you be my love Connor? So this is from him. And they were so excited and just very honored and appreciative of this special request. And here's Emily and Richard with Mr. Connor Brent. So I'll be sharing that baptism very soon. For our next project, we're going to be using two of these Happy Harvest truck plaques from the Dollar Tree and also a box of any sort that'll fit in between the trucks. And this I got from a sweet viewer, Debbie Kirby from Palm Bay, Florida, who sent me some Waverly white chalk paint a while back. So we'll be using that box and then the welcome part of this Dollar Tree windmill. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off all of the little embellishments and I really like these metal leaves so we'll be using those in another project at some point. And then I'm going to take my utility knife and cut across the board just so that I have the back tailgate part of the truck 
So I'm taking off the top part as well as the pumpkins. And all you have to do is give it a little bit of force and after 10 swipes, I got mine separated. So now I'm gonna paint the back of our plaques in the Waverly White chalk paint and also our coin box. You really only need to paint the sides and I painted on the inside and underneath just in case any of that shows through. If you are decorating in the red colors and dark colors, this truck is so cutie patootie painted the way it is, you probably just wanna leave it like that and then you don't have to try your hand at painting. If you do decide to leave it as the traditional little red truck, you do want to be careful when you pull off the metal leaves because you want to try and not tear off too much of that paper. So now I'm going to start painting in the back side of my truck and I'm using blacks and whites and grays, which is just really black and it's going to mix in with the white to give me that soft gray color. So I'm just playing with it and blending the colors and you guys know I'm not the greatest of painters but that doesn't matter because this can be kind of messy and it ends up pretty cutie patootie I think. So I wanted the fenders to kind of be bumped out or look like they were curved. It didn't exactly work out well but I just kept going at it until I got the look I want. There's probably about an inch or so of paint on top of this guy and it's handmade so it doesn't have to be perfect. I got the idea for doing this from a sweet viewer, Gretchen Harvey from Rayford, North Carolina, who makes these little trucks and hers are so stinking cute. She does it with a buffalo check freehand or maybe gingham, but they're really cute and she turns them into little planters. And she has a Facebook page called The Rustic Rose Boutique. And I'll have that linked in my description box below as well as her Etsy shop where she's going to start selling these as well. So hers is way better than mine, but I just thought I would give it a try. So then I painted in my tires in just straight ink chalk paint. And then I'll also make the back windshield with my straight ink chalk paint as well. After doing this project, it would be way easier if you waited and painted the whole piece in your blended colors, your base color, and then go back and do the tailgate and the window. So now I'm gonna take a little yo-yo from the kids section at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna split that apart with a flathead screwdriver and then using my wire cutters, I'm gonna cut off the piece that is kind of sticking out that attaches them together so that this will lay flat on the back of my truck. I'm gonna use those as the tail lights of my truck. So now I'm gonna take a black Sharpie and on the license plate, I'm gonna write blessed one. Now, if you don't have a windmill sign, you could just write in welcome with that same Sharpie pen or a black paint pen, but I decided to use this as the back and I thought it looked like a real tailgate because it's metal and it's got that shape. So I just hot glued that right on top of that area and then I'm gonna take my tail lights and hot glue those to the bottom of my truck. So I found this silver metallic marker at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter's Square and it works really, really well. And so I'm just gonna add some highlights to my tail lights. And then once I have everything painted, I'm going to take my box and hot glue that to the bottom portion of the large piece and then attach the front piece, again, using hot glue. You could add some E6000 to this too. That would give you a stronger hold but you wanna set it up to make sure that it's completely flat and it's gonna sit up straight and not be wobbly. Then I'm gonna take some leftover paint that's already on my brush and it was sitting in water, so I know that's not the best thing for paint brushes, but then I'm just gonna make three little lines to give my tires some treads. And then I'll just wipe that off with a little paper towel just to make it softer and lighter. 
And then I'll take that same paintbrush and use it to make some shinies in my back window, which I'll end up changing to the other side, but you'll see that in a second. So now to fill the truck bed, I'm gonna use some fall leaves and some floral styrofoam, and I'm just gonna hot glue that down to the bottom of my box and then just start cutting off my floral stems so that I have individual picks that I can pop into that styrofoam. So I had made these Dollar Tree sock pumpkins in a prior DIY and I thought the colors were perfect for this so I'm just going to tuck those in the bed of the trunk and I think they look super cutie patootie. So now I'm going to make a bow and I'm just using the fold over method where I just fold it over and I'm going to do two loops on each side and then I'm going to find the center and then make tiny little slits in the middle there so that I can put my Chanel stem or pipe cleaner into that and it'll go into those little grooves and then you'll be able to move them around a little bit easier. But before I completely close it up and tie it off in the back, I'm going to take some raffia and fold that over a few times and get a messy little bundle and attach that using the extra pipe cleaner on there and then twist it in the back so that it's all together and then I'm gonna fluff out my loops and then I will dovetail the ends and hot glue that to the top left part of my truck And here's how it turned out. And I think he's just super cutie patootie. I added a little bit of glitter, which is not always my favorite, but I think here it's super perfect with the little glitter pumpkin right there in the middle. And I think he's just so adorable and will add some whimsy to your farmhouse fall decor. Like I said, it's not as good as Gretchen's, but I think he's adorable and I hope you like him too. So since Christmas is right around the corner and we're going to be starting our DIYs, I wanted to show you guys how I am collecting tin can lids from the family and I just placed this right by my sink so that they know once they open a can of whatever, they can wash it off and stick it into my little bucket. And so if you guys do the same, you can do some of the DIYs that I have planned. So for this project, I'm using two of the Christmas ornament plaques from Dollar Tree two and a half rolls of nautical rope and then some canvas drop cloth that I get from Walmart for $9.99. So all I'm going to do is take some scraps and cover the bottom portion of my ornament on the back. You may want to paint the backs of these just so that it looks a little bit prettier, but the fabric when we glue it down, that doesn't look that great either. So you could actually even put some more fabric on the back just to give it a cleaner finish. So I just cut around the ornament and then I'm going to use my hot glue and push that fabric over the edge and kind of do it tightly and pull it in so that you don't have too many wrinkles. It's okay to have a couple because I want this to look like an acorn 
and so there's usually some texture in the bottom portion of the acorn but for the most part we want it as flat as we can and then once I get that all nice and tight and ready to go, this is where you could add that extra piece of fabric to make it cleaner. But I'm gonna use my hot glue again to start on the back with my nautical rope, and then I'm gonna start twisting it around the front and then over to the back. I'm gonna really use a lot of hot glue on the back so that it stays in place because it's really kind of thick. And there is actually another type of nautical rope that's even thicker. And I tried using that one, but it was just way too hard to go around the corners. And then eventually, the higher you go, it's gonna wanna slip because you're making that curve. And so I started hot gluing it to the front as well as the back, so it was really gonna stay in place. And then on the corner pieces, as you're making that turn, I did hot glue in between there so that it's attached rope to rope and not just to the back of the plaque, if that makes sense. <laughs> and each acorn ended up taking just a little bit more than one full roll of the nautical rope. So that's why I said two and a half rolls. So once I get these completely done, in order to embellish the top, we're gonna be using some fall leaves and some mm. buffalo check ribbon and a little bit of the Pipberry garland. So using my wire cutters, I'm just gonna cut off a bunch of the stems of the fall leaves and I'm gonna decide where I wanna place them and then I'll use my hot glue to get those put in place. I didn't attach my two acorns yet and I'll do that a little bit later once I know everything's in the right place and it's the right level and so forth. So I've had a whole bunch of people asking me about my little purple hot glue gun pusher downer thingy. <laughs> But this is actually a makeup spatula that a sweet viewer sent me to use and it's from the Dollar Tree and you can find it in the makeup aisle. So once I get all of my leaves in place, I'm gonna be making a big perky bow for the top of these. So I'm gonna start by going up about three inches from the bottom and doing a twist all the way around. And then I'm gonna take another piece and go down and hold those in between my thumb and my forefinger. So every time I go behind that area, I'm gonna twist it so it'll be facing the opposite direction. And then each time I make a loop, I'm gonna get a little bit bigger until I have four loops that are all gradually getting larger and larger. And then I'm gonna twist it in the back again, and then I'm gonna cut that off. And then I'm gonna take the very top loop and I'm gonna turn it over underneath itself so that it's still twisted, but underneath. And then my chenille stem will go right in between that middle loop and then you'll twist it in the back and then foof out your poofs. These are very technical terms here. <laughs> so if you want a completely round bow, like for the top of a gift or something, you'll make those loops the exact same size. But this was the very first way I ever learned to make bows, and it's a little bit more technical or a little bit harder, but I think they're just super, super cutie patootie. And I thought this would be a really good time to show you guys how to make these bows step by step so that we can be ready for Christmas and all the wrapping that you'll be doing and you know that we will have DIYs with some bows. So then I just attached my bow to the top opening of my ornaments and used my chenille stem and then wrapped that around there. And then I took some pit berries and I just cut off a little bit and I actually painted these white for a different DIY and this was the leftover, but I just wanted some white in there. So I'm just gonna tuck those throughout and then I'll take some of that extra nautical rope and then feed that through the tops and tie a knot and then glue those babies together. And here it is all done. And I absolutely love this. I think it's so sweet and it's perfect for the fall season. I love the muted colors with that pop of color at the top and our buffalo check bow, of course. And I love using this drop cloth because it's a really pretty color, but it also looks like linen to me. So I love this and I hope you like it too.
For our final project, we're going to be using some furring strips and Michael J gets these from Home Depot. They're actually one by two and he rips them down so that they're one by ones, even though they're not really one by ones because you know how they don't do the exact size of the width of the boards. I don't know why they do that. Anyway, we're going to end up with four pieces cut at 24 inches each and then we'll have two pieces at eight inches each and two pieces at six and three quarters inches each. And then we're gonna take a piece of scrap wood that I don't know where it came from or how much it would be, but I just cut an eight by eight square using the miter saw. And then Michael J is gonna use his brad nailer to put these pieces together. So we're gonna use the two 24 inch pieces and then put the eight inch piece on top and then nail that in. And then we'll do that a second time with the other two 24 inch pieces and eight inch piece. And these are gonna be the bottoms, the legs of this little planter holder thingy. And so I'm gonna take my eight by eight and attach that to the open end of that big U. And then I'll do that on the other side. And so the plywood is actually going on the top and that's what we'll set our centerpiece or our floral arrangement onto. And then the bottom will just be like a lantern looking type thing. And so to get the inside measurement, which I already gave you, which was six and three quarters inches, we had to measure that to make sure what size to make those cuts. And then we'll attach those with the brad nailer as well. One thing Michael J did recommend is that you use wood glue if you're going to make this project so it'll be a little more secure. But he didn't know what I was doing so he was just following directions and then that was an afterthought. So if you do this project, which I have six more to do of these for a wedding that we're doing for a sweet friend who used to be in one of our youth group classes a long time ago and now she's getting married. So these are going to be her centerpieces. So now I'm just going to take my Waverly Wax in Antique and give this a stain job. And the places where he had ripped down the lumber, it's raw wood, so it takes the stain or the wax a little bit differently. So I had to do those a couple of times so it wasn't so streaky and not as really pretty as the regular top part of the wood. So anyway, after I get that all done, I'm going to be using a tray from Dollar Tree and some floral foam, and I'm just going to hot glue that in there and use a whole bunch of this eucalyptus plant that I get from Walmart for a dollar each, and I'm going to stick those into the side and kind of let them hang over. Once it gets onto the stand, it's going to hang over. I want it to hang over, so I'm just going to bend them, and so they're going in that general direction, and then I can do my arranging on my craft space and then I'll adjust everything once I get it onto the stand and it can flow down on the sides. So now I'm going to use these sunflower blooms from Walmart and these were 347 and these are really big and pretty and I like the colors of these. This is not the centerpiece that we're using for the wedding. She's actually getting fresh flowers for this but this is just going to be something for fall that we can use in the meantime and a project that you can do pretty easily. So now I'm going to take some Dollar Tree fall leaves and I'm going to put those inside there too and then I'm going to add some of the Dollar Tree hydrangeas and some pumpkin picks and those pine cone ones. And so all together, if I did the math right, I end up spending $37.50 on all of the florals and the prettiness that I'm popping inside.
I found this grass stem at Walmart and it was all put together and you see it there where it's all flat but I saw one of them was all foofed out like this so I think it's like a kind of a take on some pompous grass and these were four dollars at Walmart and then I also found some pretty orange burlap ribbon and this was $3.47 at Walmart. And so it was a little thick for what this was gonna need. And so I just cut it down in half and then folded it over in thirds. And I'm gonna put that behind a buffalo check bow that I made using the Dollar Tree ribbon. And I'm just gonna attach that to the back end of this bow and then poof it all up and make it look all cutie patootie. And then in a few spots, I'm gonna add a little bit of cuteness by using this technique that my Aunt Jeannie taught me a long time ago, where you just kind of scrunch up three different little poofs and tie those together with a chenille stem. And in this case, I'm gonna have to poke it into the floral foam. So you're just gonna put it onto a skewer and then it just looks like a faux bow, I guess. And you can add some more buffalo check cuteness to your arrangement and then i also added some tails over to the side of the buffalo check ribbon and the pretty orange burlap ribbon from walmart and then i added a stem of amaranthus that's that green stuff that's hanging down and all of those i just stuck into that floral foam and this is how it turned out and i am totally smitten with this one guys and i love it i think it looks pretty darn high end. I'm not a good flower arranger, but this really didn't take much. It just was a matter of sticking these different beautiful flowers into that floral foam. And here it is. So I love how this turned out. I hope you like it too. Let me know which one was your favorite. I hope everyone is doing well. If you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up. I feel like I say this all the time. I do. I don't. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> so anyway, I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.